Wow, I think that's a big number. <laughs> that's a lot of selfies, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, I suppose that marking uh, something that's special, a vacation, a graduation or something, um, marking it in some way and a historic for historical you know purposes that to look back to have a memory and stuff we've been doing that for a long time and and that's great selfies in general can be very um, attention seeking um, like an attention seeking behavior or validation um, and I think people can also use it for the contrary, like, oh my gosh, I look so bad without makeup or something, and then someone say, oh no, you don't, or, um, oh yeah, you really, you know, my product would look great. So I think it can go either way. Um, I think a lot of people use it to hopefully build up their self-esteem, and then I think the more kind of like Instagram or um, the more famous or more followers you get, you also get the more you get more haters and more people um, that'll comment negatively. So I think it kind of depends on who you're sending it to. I think if you're sending it to friends, like they'll validate you. And if you send it to the public and you don't know any of the public, you have to be open to whatever feedback you get. So I think it really depends on who you're sending it to um, as to the impact on your self-esteem. I think it could definitely go completely positive or completely negative. I think that God gives us tools and it's up to the individual as to how they're going to use them. Um, I think selfies reflect a need to be seen, a need to be validated, a need to have things that they don't get in their normal life. Um, and it doesn't matter really what age. I mean, people think it's, it's between, you know, the teenagers to the 20s or whatever. Um, I am, I'm 50 and I have friends and before in my 40s, you know, around my age range, 40s and 50s, that um, take selfies regularly, regularly. And so it doesn't really matter the age even. Um, I think that selfies reflect a need. I do have a social media underscore side the greatest. You should follow me. Um, but do I post that much? No. The only time I post, well, I think I only have like four posts. Um, I have one from when I came back from Berkeley, my summer camp. Um, two for my birthday, and then one for when my boyfriend passed away. That was it. I do have social media. And just as recently, I try not to post too much on it because I feel like People just want to be seen, and like I'll be feeling kind of goofy sometimes posting, cause I just feel like, like what am I posting for? Like, I really don't be wanting to post, but I'll be feeling like society as a whole be forcing people to post stuff just so they can be seen. That's how I really feel. So, yeah. This article is named American Psychiatric Association Makes It Official, Selfie a Mental Disorder. Open quotes, Chicago, Illinois, the American Psychiatric Association, APA, has officially confirmed what many people thought all along. Taking selfies is a mental disorder. The APA made this classification during its annual board of directors meeting in Chicago. The disorder is called selfieitis and is defined as the obsessive compulsive 
desire to take photos of oneself and post them on social media as a way to make up for the lack of self-esteem and to fill a gap in intimacy. APA said there are three levels of disorder. One, borderline cephalitis, taking photos of oneself at least three times a day but not posting them on social media. Number two, acute cephalitis, taking photos of oneself at least three times a day and posting each of the photos on social media. Number three, chronic cephalitis, uncontrollable urge to take photos of oneself round the clock and posting the photos on social media more than six times a day. According to the APA, why there is currently no cure for the disorder, temporarily treatment is available during cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. The other good news is that CBT is covered under Obamacare, end quotes. So um, there, there are a few um, addictions that are um, considered to be a like a psychological problem like gambling addiction is one of the ones in the DSM, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, uh, which is like the, um, it's the manual that mental health professionals use in order to diagnose it. And it, and it um, describes what is a mental health disorder and what is not a mental health disorder, right? Um, so the behavioral addiction right now is gambling addiction uh, that's in the DSM. Other types of addictions are uh, the substance abuse addictions. But there's some overlap between substance abuse addiction and any behavioral addiction. So shopping addiction, gaming, um, and selfie addiction. And those overlaps are things like uh, they have a social impact. You know, they have an impact to your, in your social relationships, uh, a negative impact. And it can also be that um, an addiction is something you try to stop, but you can't. You know, you spend more time doing it than you intend to. And um, if there is such a thing as selfie addiction, uh, some of the folks that they have interviewed, and I think at this time, the most research has been done in India, just because the population of India is so big. Like India's got more Facebook accounts than any other country. So they, they've done more research on this than any other country. But um, some of the like extreme cases of selfie addiction has been um, up to 20 hours a day doing taking selfies. And with the goal of trying to make the perfect selfie, like to look perfect, like the person wants an image that looks perfect, whatever perfect is, <laughs> right? Um, now we're into maybe some other kinds of disorders. Now we're going beyond addiction and maybe we're going into like um, narcissistic personality disorder where someone wants constant admiration um, or they think that their um, accomplishments are way more lofty than they actually are. You, you know what I mean? And they want a lot of praise and they think they should get a lot of admiration and praise for just kind of very normal things. Uh, that, that's kind of what a narcissist uh, is looking for and, and constant feedback. They have actually low self-esteem. You know, so a picture of them eating dinner, which is, you know, that's, that's no lofty accomplishment, right? Eating dinner. But they may post a picture, a selfie of themselves eating dinner, and they're surprised and can even get upset if they don't get praise for, oh, this picture of you eating dinner. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's where some, some of the overlaps. Um, so with addiction, behavioral addiction, um, narcissism. And, and also there has been some um, maybe like questioning as far as uh, selfie addiction, if it is such a thing, um, if there's a, a mood disorder, a depression um, associated with it. So there's still a lot of research to be done, you know, to, to determine if this is actually a mental health disorder. And then once we come up with um, what would the symptoms be, 
you know, for selfie addiction, we would have to all agree on what that would be. Then we would also have to agree on different levels, you know, like a moderate addiction, a severe addiction. You know, what would a moderate selfie addiction be? Ten selfies a day? Five selfie? You know, I don't know. It's kind of a subjective question, but that would be the next thing that they would have to determine. Um, an addiction is a behavior that you repetitively do that causes problems in at least two areas of your life. That can be personal, it can be work, it can be um, school, uh, recreation, but typically it will interfere with at least, with relationships in it or, or performance in at least two areas of your life. Um, so people can, you know, people are like, well, what, what kind of problems? Well, if you are at work or you are at school and you are taking selfies or you are playing on social media or whatever and you it interferes with your work productivity or your school productivity that's a problem right it's causing it's that behavior is causing you to fail or to um, screw up in an area um, if it also impacts um, relationships, um, if you have so many selfies and your parents are getting upset with you all the time or you're, it's creating drama or <clears throat> with friends or whatever, <clears throat> then that is another thing that you would consider to be damaging your life. And so I'm not going to say that selfies in and of themselves are an addiction. Um, it's, it's really, again, how the person utilizes the tool. And I mean, I work with people with eating disorders, right? I can step on a scale. I can know what my weight is. I might have a, yay, I've lost weight or, oh, I'm 50 and there's my weight. And that's not going to impact my life in a negative way. When I was 18 and I had an eating disorder, and I stepped on the scale five, six, ten times a day, and I was over-focused on food and diet and exercise and what I look like, um, that is a problem. Um, and so I think that selfies in and of themselves are not a reflection of a narcissism. I just don't. I think it can be. I think that... Um, narcissism is far more complex um, than just taking a picture of yourself. I think that as a, as a whole, our society is becoming far more self-absorbed. A hundred percent. It's, it's a reflection of Satan himself. He is like, he was so self-absorbed that he got himself kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be God. Well, so Satan is running this earth, right? Him and all of his little, his little bandits. I like to call them monkeys on your back. They are, to me, if you can just imagine the monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, they're like clinging to you. They're stuck. They got their fingers in your wounds and they're wanting to. And so they want you to feel bad about yourself. That's their job. They want to destroy you. And they, um, they are going to use anything and everything to destroy you. And so if you pick up the, the camera and you need to take a selfie because you're not feeling so great about yourself or you think, hey, I look pretty good today, so I'm going to take a picture of myself, um, then that is a reflection of something that you're missing and that you need. If you need love, if you need validation, if you need safety, if you need security, if you need belonging, then that is, that's what that needs. And so when I see people taking selfies, it's, it, it pains me because it reflects the, that it, it already reflects the insecurity that people feel, that they don't feel what they need to feel in order to feel okay about themselves. My job is to help people get comfortable in their skin whether they're an eating, have an eating disorder, 
whether they've had trauma in their life, whether they are anxious or depressed or whatever. My job is to help them understand the truth about who they are. And not the not Satan's truth, not the world's truth, not what your mama said when she was criticizing you. That's not truth. Truth is that God loves you no matter what you do, no matter how many times you screw up, because God knows I have. And he wants to know the truth about you. And anytime you focus on yourself, you're not going to get it. You're not going to find it. Anytime you focus on God, um, reading, um, listening to YouTube stuff on what God thinks about you and who you are, that's, that's where you're going to get it. And that when we begin to, I like to say, pull our head out of our butt and look around and see that there are other people in the world that need our help and support, we actually gain um, compassion. We actually gain a sense of esteem. We actually gain um, a feeling of belonging and that I am actually needed. And that is where you are going to find your true value, your true sense of self-worth. It's not going to come from a selfie. Selfies are fun. I think Snapchat is the funniest thing ever. I love it. All those filters cracks me up. If I'm having a bad day, I'll start doing that. I'll do it with my husband. <laughs> Get bunny ears coming out or big red lips. It's hysterical. But I don't need to push that out there. It's just for my entertainment. And so um, I guess, again, it goes back to God gives us tools. And the Internet is an amazing tool. It can help this big old world feel like this big. It can help people feel connected. It can help people feel like they belong. Um, but it can also be used for bad and to, and to hurt and destroy. Behavioral addiction is something, it's not a substance such as like alcohol or cigarettes or pot, whatever. It's not. Um, something having the impact on you it's more you getting the sense of control or um like ease like um almost like a relief of your anxiety by doing something um so you know some people could be addicted to the physical act of like eating food some people could be addicted to exercise because it provides some relief and in doing the behavior um and i think it i think it's almost harder to help cure or recover from than the substance because you can simply remove the substance whereas depending on the behavior um that you're addicted to it could be a very normal behavior that you kind of have to be able to see the gray zone in whereas the substance like it's hard to stop alcohol if you're addicted to it, but you remove something. Whereas if you're addicted to exercise or food, those are things that you also need in your life. So you have to come to a realization that there's a middle ground. And I think the gray area is very hard to find. I personally think that there's layers to the idea that a selfie can be an addiction. Um, because I think it depends on the person. Um, for some people, taking pictures, taking a selfie, taking a picture of their coffee, then one second later taking a picture of themselves drinking the coffee, or four seconds later taking a picture of themselves drinking the coffee with their best friend. To me, that is a move of validation and putting it on as, as far as putting it on social media or um, well, it's like if for Instagram, uh, for Instagram, for instance, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, just constantly posting stuff that they're doing 24 seven. It's always in the selfie, selfie form. That is extremely annoying. And that shows me that, you know, you're addicted. You're looking for somebody else's opinion. You want, you want people to know what you're doing 24 seven for what I don't, I don't, 
I don't want to know what you. I don't want to know what you're doing 24/7. I don't. Um, it's and it's really annoying. And it's those type of people who I would say they can be addicted to taking to taking selfies and wanting to get approval. However, I will say that there is beauty in selfies because there's beauty in photos, and that's all selfies are. In it. This that's all selfies are in in, in, a, um, in a instance. Uh, they're photos and you know what's recently been going on with my life I've had a new appreciation for photos because had it not been for photos I probably wouldn't be feeling as great as I do now because those and in those minutes when you're taking the selfies your pulp your your um you're posing and you're smiling and doing little kissy faces and you know it's just looking back at those photos you you smile especially after you've, you've lost someone mm -hmm. and um oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Mm In some instances, when you do take those photos, and I wish I would have took me more. Just looking back at it, I wish I would have took me more. But um, in those photos, you capture the joy, and you mm -hmm. capture the happiness, and you capture the love. You capture so much. So, you know, for some people, it's just, you know, like I said, the validation and the opinion is something that they want. But for others, it's like how your aunt takes, oh, let's take a photo, let's take a photo, let's take a photo, let's take a photo. You're just trying to capture that moment. So, I love me some selfies. <laughs> yeah. Selfies can definitely be an addiction for some people. Um, selfies, you know, uh, you ever seen catfish? So, catfish is just full of people taking selfies, stealing selfies. So, that can be an addiction, stealing selfies. And then uh, people editing their selfies, make them look even more extra than they just was doing a selfie. So yeah, selfies can definitely be an addiction. And they already got like mechanisms just to up your selfie uh, pictures. So yeah. The idea of self is addiction. addiction. I don't know that selfies itself, like taking a picture of yourselves. I don't know that the action of it, I guess it could be, but it's, I think the thing behind it is probably the more the addiction is just more about me and me being here look at me this is what I'm doing look at this I'm living my best life everybody got to just capture themselves like you know I got to show people this is what I really did you know I, you know that kind of thing I even see people post selfies of themselves looking sad or I'm crying I broke up with such and such let me take a picture and post this like why so just the whole look at me look at me or this is what happened to me and this is what's going on with me that's a common thing, a common thread that I'm seeing more and more. I think the cell phone just in general is an addiction. Just the selfie is just one of the many things on the list that we are addicted to with our cell phones and some of the patterns that we have developed just having that constant access or always just checking like more than selfies I probably check my email or notifications uh, as far as text way too much because I I'll be sitting at work and I have work to do but somehow I just always got to check to see do I have a new email do I have a new email and it's like who's even emailing you no one you're just getting like sales or ads and things so just the whole idea of always pressing something on the phone that's definitely a big addiction um I think <laughs> just by social media and um seeing certain people out there I think that um a lot of people are in a sense addicted to taking selfies uh but i think more of it is the addiction to their insecurity and their need to fill a void and their need to feel validation so they take the selfies in order to get that gratification or validation i don't know that it's addiction to taking pictures of themselves i know people do take a lot of selfies and there are some girls out there um that really really like their selfies um but i don't know of an actual psychological study it'd be interesting but um yeah i don't know about it being an addiction i know there's an addiction to like your cell phone so i guess that could kind of um 
go hand in hand with it, but I think it's more of an insecurity validation seeking thing. An article from Independent titled Selfie Obsessed Teenager Danny Bowman Suicidal After Failing to Capture the Perfect Selfie. Open quotes A teenager became so obsessed with taking the perfect selfie that he tried to kill himself when his efforts failed. Danny Bowman, 19, would spend 10 hours a day taken up to 200 photos of himself on his iPhone. The teenager dropped out of school, remained housebound for six months, and lost two stone in an attempt to capture the perfect self-portrait. Danny eventually became so depressed that he took an overdose, but he was discovered by his mother Penny and rushed to hospital. He told the mirror, I was constantly in search of taking a perfect selfie, and when I realized I couldn't, I wanted to die. I lost my friends, my education, my health, and almost my life. Danny, who is believed to be Britain's first selfie addict, underwent intensive hospital therapy to combat his technology addiction, OCD and body dysmorphic disorder, a form of anxiety that causes sufferers to worry excessively about their appearance. He started posting selfies to Facebook at the age of 15, but found his addiction spreading out of control after his aspirations of being a male model were dashed by a rejection at a casting session for an agency in 2011. It was the beginning of a two-year addiction that culminated in his suicide attempt. But the teenager is not alone. Dr. David Veil, a psychiatrist at the London clinic where Danny was treated, told the Mirror, Danny's case is particularly extreme, but this is a serious problem. It's not a vanity issue. It's a mental health one, which has an extremely high suicide rate. Danny said he hopes that by speaking out, he can help others whose lives are being ruined by an unhealthy relationship with social media. People don't realize when they post a picture of themselves on Facebook or Twitter, it can so quickly spiral out of control. It becomes a mission to get approval and it can destroy anyone, he said. It's a problem like drugs, alcohol, or gambling. I don't want anyone to go through what I've been through. End quotes. Well, I think that everyday living can be affected, um, you know, by mood, your mood. Um, social relationships can be affected. And then in very extreme cases, uh, you know, people have died taking very risky behaviors, engaging in very risky behaviors. I think there was a young man that was posing um, as a train was coming, you know, down the railroad tracks, and he w waited too long, and the young man was killed. So, um, you know, it, 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 it depends on how a person can be affected, affected, but I would think it could be some pretty severe implications to a person's mental, emotional, and physical health. Yeah. It can have a significant impact on your relationships. Um, very isolating because that becomes your form of connection. And um, then, I mean, it can affect your finances, depending on what it is. It can affect your work, um, your health. Again, it depends on the addiction, but it really just affects everything about your day-to-day -day life because your life isn't about what goes on day to day it's about how can i fit in this addiction and then the other stuff comes when if there's time for it but that addiction takes takes priority person allows it to be yeah i think they could be 
because if you're always taking selfies every few seconds or every few moves, you know, and I maybe I'm thinking maybe the some of the younger generation does that a lot, you know, where <laughs> almost as if they're filming themselves through a selfie, making a, a small little video or whatever with selfie after selfie after selfie. Um, it can be. It, it can be. But, you know, that's a, I think that's a part of just the technological age we're in now. Um, there you have it. <laughs> I think that um, narcissism is far more complex um, than just taking a picture of yourself. I think that as a, as a whole, our society is becoming far more self-absorbed a hundred percent it's it's a reflection of satan himself he is like he was so self-absorbed that he got himself kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be god well so satan is running this earth right him and all of his little his little bandits i like to call them monkeys on your back they are to me if you can just imagine the monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, they're like calling into you. They're stuck. They got their fingers in your wounds and they're wanting to. And so they want you to feel bad about yourself. That's their job. They want to destroy you. And they, um, they are going to use anything and everything to destroy you. And so if you pick up the, the camera and you need to take a selfie because you're not feeling so great about yourself or you think, hey, I look pretty good today, so I'm going to take a picture of myself, um, then that is a reflection of something that you're missing and that you need. If you need love, if you need validation, if you need safety, if you need security, if you need belonging, then that is... That's what that means. And so when I see people taking selfies, it's, it, it pains me because it reflects the, the it, it already reflects the insecurity that people feel, that they don't feel what they need to feel in order to feel okay about themselves. My job is to help people get comfortable in their skin, whether they're an eating, have an eating disorder whether they've had trauma in their life, whether they are anxious or depressed or whatever. My job is to help them understand the truth about who they are. And not, the, not Satan's truth, not the world's truth, not what your mama said when she was criticizing you. That's not truth. Truth is that God loves you no matter what you do, no matter how many times you screw up because God knows I have. And he wants to know the truth about you. And anytime you focus on yourself, you're not going to get it. You're not going to find it. Anytime you focus on God, um, reading, um, listening to YouTube stuff on what God thinks about you and who you are, that's, that's where you're going to get it. And that when we begin to, I like to say, pull our head out of our butt and look around and see that there are other people in the world that need our help and support. We actually gain um, compassion. We actually gain a sense of esteem. We actually gain um, a feeling of belonging and that I am actually needed. And that is where you are going to find your true value, your true sense of self-worth it's not going to come from a selfie selfies are fun i think snapchat is the funniest thing ever i love it all those filters cracks me up if i'm having a bad day i'll start doing that i'll do it with my husband <laughs> get bunny ears coming out or big red lips it's hysterical but i don't need to push that out there it's just for my entertainment and so um I guess, again, it goes back to God gives us tools and the internet is an amazing tool. It can help this big old world feel like this big. It can help people feel connected. It can help people feel like they belong. Um, 
but it can also be used for bad and to, and to hurt and destroy. I actually been taking selfies since I was a little kid. So I think it's hilarious that now everybody's like, this is a thing. Like, let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie. You see people of all ages, like, let's get a selfie. From little kids to, like, 90-year-old people. Everybody wants a picture of themselves somewhere. I mean, I used to have, get in trouble because I would take pictures of myself with my parents' Polaroid or 35 millimeter. And so when they would get it developed or they would see the Polaroid um, pictures laying around, it was like, you wasting the film taking pictures of yourself. But now, I guess, all we are wasting is digital space. But I think it's amazing that people just <laughs> want to take pictures of their face all the time, no matter where they are. And they can't even live in the moment anymore because they just have to capture their big face in that moment um, and post it on Instagram or Facebook or something for somebody else to see. I think it's hard for someone to admit that it's controlling them versus a control thing. Because um, I think a, a lot of people with an addiction could say, I have control over it, um, I can stop, you know, but I think deep down they probably know they can't, um, and it's, I think you're addicted to something when y it impacts your daily life, um, it, it depends on the addiction, you know, if you're addicted to drugs, like, and you can't stop it, or you're stealing money to get it, or you're driving far to go get a drug, like, that's a way to tell, but I think the core, um, maybe definition would be like you're going to extreme lengths to make sure you can act on the behavior or get the substance um, and you can't give it up like you can't go a day without it or you can't stop something and again it's hard to define not knowing the specific addiction we're talking about but in a sense it's controlling you instead of you controlling it. You know, when you have an addiction um, and you engage in your poison, right, whatever that might be, substance abuse or selfies or whatever, um, there's a certain part of the brain that's activated. It's called the reward centers of the brain. And that's why we feel um, pleasure when we do certain things, right? A certain part circuitry in the brain is activated, yeah? And so... Um, you know, I don't know if there would be some kind of um, physiological circuitry specificity to someone that would de develop this kind of addictive personality. I, I don't know. So that's kind of maybe from a more neuroscience um, point of view. But um, we could also talk about it, and this is the this is the um, corner from which I like to talk about it is, you know, what are the social implications that are making people do this? Like what, what's going on socially that, um, you know, you're on vacation or you're having dinner and you're having a conversation with your friends or family, what, whatever. And instead of being in the present moment, you're, you're, um, you're taking a selfie, you know, to post to get, I don't know, like attention, admiration, I, I don't know. It seems like there's a lack of kind of engagement in that moment <clears throat> socially. If you're, you know, constantly, particularly, constantly stopping to let me take a picture of this and post it and see what kind of feedback I get on it. Yeah. There, there seems to be some kind of lack of anchoring in the present moment to me uh, with someone who's engaged in doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like the weirdest time to take selfies, um, for me, I feel like if you was to take a selfie in like a, like a, like a church, man, church is probably the wrong place to take a selfie. One time I saw someone take a selfie at a funeral, I thought that was really interesting. Because, I mean, I didn't know, I, I mean, but that's also, I don't understand, I know people take pictures at funerals, period. I don't really know that that's a memory I want to capture, but for some they do. But to take a selfie, like with a casket or somebody that's dead, that's a bit much to me. I find that to be inappropriate to post, but you know, to each his own. That's not something I would want to do, and that I think is appropriate. But whatever. Everybody is just all about taking. They want to just see their face in the moment and post it up. And I, I just think it's kind of weird to do it at a funeral. 
I've not seen any that um, I would think would be inappropriate, but I would think maybe an inappropriate place would maybe be at church, during a church service, um, or at a funeral, you know. Uh, I, I definitely there are, are inappropriate places, and I think those two would, would uh, in my mind, would be inappropriate selfie times or selfie shots. All right, so when I look at, when I think about selfies, um, in a little bit, they're okay, they're cool, because at the end of the day, you got to understand how to love yourself. And But I think some people go overboard with it, with all the selfies. I remember a long time ago, man, I was in, in, uh, in music class, and, and my choir director said, he said, the person who has pictures of themselves throughout their whole house is conceited, because you see yourself every day when you look in the mirror. So you need pictures of, the people that you don't see every day in your phone. One or two selfies, that's cool. But you got 35,000 selfies of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's a little overboard. Maybe that, maybe that's more, you know what I'm saying, self-worship than anything. So, you know what I'm saying? Me, I keep my family in my phone. I don't care how I look. I know how I look. So, I don't think there's really anything wrong with people taking selfies. Um, if it's making them feel better about themselves, um, do I think we take too many as a people? Yes, because everything shouldn't be about how you look. But at the end of the day, if it makes you feel good, do what makes you feel good. Unless it's against God. Okay. <laughs> well, my thoughts about selfies are that, you know, I don't really see the wrong in them. They're kind of just, just pictures. Um, and... Yeah, I just, I mean, it's a really quick photo that you can take with your friends, you know, four seconds, just a nice little snap and smile, and it could be a group photo, it could be with one person, honestly, I don't, just pictures, you know, how you, re how you take a regular picture with your family, it's just the same, it's really essentially the same exact thing, it's just a different name on it, and you can just turn it around and take a picture of you, that's what I see, so, yeah. I think that they serve a good purpose. But then I also think that sometimes they can be very invasive and too much. I like the fact that you can use the phone to call people, email, text, and all those different things. Check your internet. I like the, the fact that you can have all these things with you. But then at the same time, I don't think that we know when to turn things off. We don't know when enough is enough. People now have access to you all the time to the point where you might be doing something you may not even be in the right headspace, but you get a text and somebody sends you a picture of something you may or not want to see or they just invade you with not so good news that might not be appropriate at the time. And so there's no warning anymore. I know people say you can turn off your notifications. You can, but then when you pick up your phone, you still are just bombarded with a picture of a bloody toe or something else that you may or may not really want to have at that time. So that's not, that's a not so good part of cell phones, but they're like, you can, you're, you can talk to your family, Skyping, FaceTime, and all those different things that you can do on the phone. So in that case, I think it's good. I also think uh, I'm kind of worried about the was it 5G and some of the things that's going to be coming out as we get more and more technology, more ways and things, EMFs and things like that going on. That's worrisome. As much as I do spend a lot of time on my phone, I know that it's not 100% good for us. And I also hate to see like families out to dinner with each other and everybody's just glued to their phone the whole time. So I guess at the end of the day, while I say they are good, it seems like sometimes it might just be a little bit more bad or negative, just how we respond to the phones and the access. The phone itself is not a bad thing. It's, we just don't really know how to temper it. And rationing is really not important to us at this point. We just want to have our instant gratification and instant access all the time. My thoughts about selfies. Um, I feel like it's something that everybody wants to do. And, you know, it's something that is just kind of like normal now, kind of like just walking down the street. I feel like it's something that everybody probably has, even if they say they don't. I think selfies are fun. Um, 
I think uh, people take them because they feel confident about themselves uh, and they want to share with the world or I guess friends or, or family or acquaintances how they look. Um, I'm not a selfie taker. <laughs> I just I just don't take selfies of myself, you know. Well, I don't take selfies. Um, no particular reason, I just don't do it. But I like to look at others, you know, and, and compliment them on their selfies. I think the selfie stuff go has go, taken it a bit further, you know, and I... Um, really think that it takes a person away from what they're actually doing. You know, they're they're not enjoying the graduation or they're not enjoying their birthday party. You know, they can be thinking about the selfie and for mental health, wellness and social relationship happiness, I'm all about mindfulness. You know, and and when I'm having a conversation, I want to be speaking with mindfulness. I want the person that I'm with to be listening with mindfulness. And I'll try to listen to them with mindfulness, you know? And that's how um, I think very deep interactions are passed between people. You know, I just, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get how people can be engaged together. And, but in my mind, I'm thinking about setting up for the perfect selfie. I, I, I don't understand it. Yeah.